for those. So good afternoon or good evening to everybody. Um, my name is Brian Terry. I am one of the administrators of the Central Florida Meetup Group, and we have um, an options group. We've been running this thing, I guess, about six years now. We started with, I think, six members. Now we're probably uh, over 300. And when the pandemic came, uh, you know, we started doing the online meetings. So we got people from all over the place which who joined, which is great. So before I get started, I need your participation. So in the chat, I just need you to answer three questions. So the first question is, where are you from? The second one is, what's your experience level, either beginner, intermediate, or advanced? And is this your first meeting? So go ahead and just type in in the chat the answers to those questions. So I'll wait until you guys type it in, but I just want to know what, where you're from and what's your experience level. And is this your first meetup meeting with us? So Eric is the first one who jumped in. So. Okay, Jessica's from North Carolina, her first meetup. Well, welcome. Dennis used to be from Chicago. This is not Dennis's first meeting. He's one of the co-administrators of this group. Um, William, New York City, excellent. Wait for a few more to come in. I just really, uh, Yolanda from Tampa. Good to have you. Contra Vidra. And Tampa. I know, uh, I know Ron. Um, okay. Very good. Well, thanks for doing that. It's good to know where everybody is from. So um, it used to be everybody was from Orlando. And so now I just think it's pretty cool that we have, uh, you know, people from all over that are joining us. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So today I wanted to talk to you about the diagonal spread. It's also known as the poor man's covered call. Um, and it's a, it's a strategy for me is getting to be, I'm really, really liking this strategy as we go into the new year. And hopefully as I go through the slides, you'll see why I like it. Um, and, um, and I definitely want to share everything I know, uh, know about it and that I can share in an hour, but if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them after or via email, whatever works for you. So, um, so anyway, the first thing is what's a diagonal spread. So it's really just a modified calendar spread where we are, um, using different strike prices when we're when we're doing this trade and different expirations so that's kind of why they call it a diagonal it's two different expirations two different strikes and it's in the same using the same stock or etf so that's kind of why they call it a diagonal if just for the option of geeks out there if it was using the same strikes, it would be called a calendar spread. So nothing uh, drastic uh, about, nothing magical about the spread. It's just that to me, it, it enables us to set up a really nice trade, either with a bullish or bearish thesis using options. So let me just break this down to you. Um, I think it's a relatively simple strategy because what we're really doing is we're buying a longer dated option and we're selling a date, an option that's closer to the current date. And, and what that does when we buy that long option, either primarily we do them as calls, but you can do them as puts. Um, you buy that longer dated option and that enables us to 
cell calls against it. And we will also, you know, the theta of those short dated options, the decay helps to improve our basis in the stock. Um, and what's really good about it and why people call it a poor man's covered call is that it requires a whole lot less capital um, than a traditional covered call. And I'll show you some numbers that kind of bring that home. So, um, and then the other thing I would say is the biggest thing that when I post a poor man's covered call or a diagonal, I get a lot of questions as to, well, why did you do it that way? Why didn't you use a later option? Why didn't you use one closer to the money or in the money? And what I would say is there are a ton of different variations of this strategy. So no, no strategy, no variation is right or wrong. It's just how you you know, want to trade it. So I'm going to share with you tonight how I trade the diagonal trade. So here's my typical setup. I will look to buy a call that's about 45 to 60 days out. And I typically look for the monthly op, you know, options that I'm going to buy. So I'm looking for 45 to 60 days out. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm looking somewhere between the 35 and the 40 delta. So for those that are new, delta just means how close to the money we are. So if it was right at the money, so for example, if the stock was trading at $100 and we were using the 100 strike, it would be a 50 delta right at the money. So I'm slightly out of the money by using a 35 or 40 delta. And I'll show you that on a um, <clears throat> when we go to the charts. Um, and then when I look to see in that 35 to 40, what I'm really looking for is what strikes in there have the greatest open interest. So that's kind of my criteria for setting up um, the, uh, the trade, the long call. And then <clears throat> I look to sell calls against it and I'm using strikes that are between seven and 14 days out. So that's kind of the whole setup. And then I'm what I use to determine that short call is what is the expected move on the, on the stock for that period? And then I want to sell the call just outside of that move. So does that make sense, everybody? Any questions about that? Like I said, it's a pretty simple strategy when <clears throat> if you just set it up, you know, buy the call 45, 60 days out, sell the call just outside the expected move and you're set up. But any questions? Just want to make sure. Okay. So here's how I manage these trades. So once the trade is started, <laughs> I, if the stock moves up, which usually that's what we want it to do in most cases, if the stock moves up to our short strike, to the level of our short strike, and it's close to expiration, I just close the trade, take my profit and move on to the next one. And my goal on these trades are to make about a 30% return on risk. So if I'm risking $500 per contract, I want to make 150 Per contract. That's kind of my goal, 30%. And if the stock doesn't move up or doesn't move up enough, then I will roll my call out after I've achieved between 80 and 90% of the credit. So if I collected a dollar credit for selling that short call and that credit now is down under 20 cents, and I'm not going to exit the trade, I will roll my call out another week to collect additional credit. So that's kind of how I handle it if the stock moves up or down. So, and it's pretty simple. Once you have kind of rules, you don't have to like really worry about what am I you know, gonna do in this particular case. Um, so, okay, so do you use MMM? Uh, JB is, I'm not sure what you mean by MMM. So what I use to determine the expected move 
is I look at the option chain and it will tell me <clears throat> that this stock is expected to move plus or minus X amount of points in this period of time. So I look at that and say, okay, that is um, where I will sell my calls outside of that move. So that's kind of the way I look at, you know, how much do I expect it to move? I look at um, the option chain and go from there. Now, another way of doing it is to say, if it moves one standard deviation, like to the 15 delta, that's usually well outside the expected move. So, um, but you can, you know, play around with it. You can look at what's the, uh, you know, the resistance level and sell just above the resistance level. But um, one thing I would caution you on, and I'll mention this probably several times, is that you don't want to get too aggressive um, when you are selling your call because we will make our money on the long call. So if you go in the money on the short call, that's where the, tr the, the trade can start to get into trouble. So you want to make sure that you're using, you know, a pretty conservative guess on um, where you think the stock is going to get to, but not beyond. And, and, and again, I'll show you, we'll do an example live so you can kind of see how that works. And then a question from William is, how do you send, oh, how do you uh, tell which stocks you want to do options on? So I'll um, probably touch on that again, but what we're really looking for is we're looking for really strong trending stocks, you know, good name stocks that, that are in a trend. But all, I also look to see, you know, where it has room to run, like it has a previous high that it's getting up to. So that's kind of one of the things that I like to look at is if a stock is at an all time high, I generally don't want to put this trade on because I want it to have room to run to a particular level. And, and a question about uh, from Eric is, you know, do I look at IV when choosing the underlying? You know, I think what I kind of look at is I look at the IV and I don't want it to be super high implied volatility. We don't want it to be super high, but we want it enough to pay us, you know, a good rate of return. I want to hit that 30%. So if I can hit the 30% and not go too crazy with, you know, a really high beta stock, that's kind of the ideal situation. So I hope I answered everybody's questions. I appreciate the question. Um, so um, you need to, on this strategy for trade management, what you really want to focus on is watching that short call. Because what you don't want is you don't want your stock to blow through your short call because you could actually be assigned on the stock. And you don't want that. You want to use that to generate you know, credit to reduce your basis, but you don't want to have to go in the money. Um, and then the other thing is... You know, this functions very similar to a covered call. However, they're two set, they're really two separate trades, your long call and your short call. When you do a covered call, you buy a hundred shares and sell a call against it. If it goes in the money, you um, it just takes your stock away, right? Well, on under this trade, that wouldn't happen. They would just assign you short a hundred shares or 200, whatever number of contracts you sold. So you really want to make sure that you're not selling calls that have a really good chance of going into money. And, and again, the way I like to use sell the call is I want to look at the expected move and then I want to sell just outside that expected move. So that's kind of how I do it. There's people who do it you know, differently, they may sell even further out of the money. So, um, so that is, um, you know, the way um, that I set and manage these trades. And, you know, Kirk asked, you know, what happens if the stock falls at the point you close? The, yeah. So if the stock falls, like say we bought the stock and the stock dropped 10%, we would just close the trade and take our loss and close the call out. And the good thing is, you know, because we're buying a call and not actually buying the stock, our risk in the trade is 
there is, you know, it's limited. So that's a good thing. So, and I'll show you, I, I came up with a slide that I think really will show kind of the difference there. So, um, and then the last thing is that patience pays. You know, one of the things that I would say is by after doing this strategy for a while, that you want to make sure that you don't overreact with a quick move up or a quick move down. You want to make sure you stick to those rules of, you know, like, is the credit, you know, 80% of, have I made 80% of the um, the credit received, then I want to roll it. If it's not, then I don't want to roll it. If I am at close to 30%, I want to take profits, I take profits. I don't want to do it after I can make 5% after a day. So does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so that's how I manage the trades. Pretty simple. It does, you know, it doesn't have a lot of. Um, and the other thing that I would say is, I don't want to hold, you know, do a trade when earnings are coming up, and I don't want to do a trade when a big announcement, like a Fed announcement, is coming up. So, like today, for example. Tomorrow morning, we're going to get the CPI number, inflation. And so I didn't put a, a new trade on today because if I put it on and the, and the market gaps down, you know, 10%, then, I've, then I'm then i underwater before I even start. So I just decided, you know, today I'm not going to put one on. Um, and um, so that's kind of my, my theory. You want to make sure you're not putting a trade on into an earnings event or a big major announcement. Okay, so here's just a quick example of a trade that um, that I made. So this was a, and it's funny, I did in the last probably six weeks, I've done three Microsoft four men's covered calls and they all were, were profitable. So this one is uh, the first one. And I, the stock was about $372.90 a share. And I bought the January 19, 390 call. This was back in November, early or mid-November. And I sold the, the 385. So I paid $7 for the long call. And I collected basically $2 for the short call. So it cost me $5 or $500 per contract to put this trade on. So if I had done a covered call and I bought a hundred shares, it would have cost me $37,000 to collect that. So that's kind of why a lot of people call this the poor man's covered call, $500 or $37,000. Now I can make more on the 37,000, but not percentage wise. So on this one, I closed my trade seven days later. I, I collected $6.50, $650. I paid $500, $505. So I made a 28.7% return on risk in seven days. So that that's kind of like the perfect example of how well this trade can work for you. So... That's just a one example. Whoop, let me go back. Okay, so this is one I actually just did. And this one is actually a bearish diagonal trade. So everybody know has heard, you know, what's going on with Boeing. And so I said, you know what, today, I don't know if you can see this chart, but Boeing kind of moved up a little bit today. It was up, I'm exactly sure, but not a ton, but enough to make me go, I think this has got way more room to the downside. Would y'all agree with that? That, you know, it's got, you know, legs to the downside if, if it continues to move down. So that's the reason I, I did it as a bearish trade. So the stock was trading at $228.37 per share. And uh, so what I did is I bought the March 220 put and I paid $668 per contract. 
And then I sold the March 19, 220 put and I collected a dollar 18. So it cost me a total of $550. And in, in the one of the groups I'm in, I put this trade on and somebody correctly pointed out, this is actually a calendar trade because both strikes are the same. I didn't set it up that way. It just, that's um, it, what it was. So, so in this trade, I have control of 100 shares to the downside for $550. So if I had gone short, it would have cost me $22,800. So that's kind of the, the advantage there. So this trade is, is brand new and it's more of a bearish trade just because I think there's more room to the downside um, for Boeing. So this will be a short trade because they have earnings in a cup in a few weeks. So, so just some random thoughts on this strategy. And um, so first of all, I would say is I like to look for stocks or ETFs. You can definitely do them on ETFs that are in a strong trend and have room to run. And what I mean by that, it has room to, it has a, either a prior high or a prior low that you think the stock could move to um, without having to go into unchartered territory. Because if it's at an all-time high, there's a really good chance it could pull back. So that's why I like them long, you know, strong trend and room to run. And ideally, I like a stock that is a really good stock that is pulled back for some reason. Maybe it's had earnings, maybe it's had just, you know, bad news. And then, you know, we it starts to recoup and move back. That's kind of my ideal diagonal trade. Um, and then the one thing that I like to do is I like to calculate how much credit I need to per day to totally recoup the cost of the trade. And I'll show you that later. But for example, if you paid $6 for a, a um, call, a long call, and you had a hundred days to over that 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 long call was good for. Then you could take that six dollars, divide it by a hundred, and know that if you collected six cents a day in credit, you would totally write off the cost of that trade, and you'd have basically a risk-free trade. So that's kind of the uh, something that good to know. And I use it when I'm comparing, you know, various potential trades to say, well, what's the cost of the trade? And, and sometimes that's a good factor in how you want to set these up. Um, again, I think rolling it at that 80 to 90% level is a good rule. It keeps you from holding them too long or rolling them too soon. And then probably the most important thing on here is when you're selling your short strike, you want to make sure that we're using a strike that is just beyond the expected move. And if you do that, then you're, you're not going to have to worry about getting in the money as often as, um, you know, it'll still happen, but it won't happen regularly. And, uh, and then the thing that I was told on the strategy is this strategy will make our money on the long strike. So there's no reason to really be too aggressive on the short strike because if the stock goes up like we think it will, we'll make money on the on the long strike. So any questions or feedback so far? Such a quiet group. It makes sense. How many people in this group do this strategy? Just curious to see if um, if this is brand new to you guys or if um, if it's a strategy that you currently do. Just curious because I think it's a great strategy. Okay, no ant, no feedback. So I'm gonna show you a really cool slide. This is one that you know when we talk about the differences between a covered call and a, um, a, a poor man's covered call. This kind of helps point it out, at least it did to me. So on the left side, 
I just took SPY, and it's not a recommendation, it's just wanted to compare numbers for everybody. So if we wanted to do a covered call in SPY, and SPY was at 476.50 as of the close or close to that. And um, so if we bought a, a hundred shares of SPY, and we said, I'm going to sell a covered call. I'm going to buy one. I'm going to sell one January 19, 483 call. And that's going to pay me 91 cents or $91. So if we did that trade, and this is a perfectly good trade. I'm not trying to despair either side. It's This trade would cost us $47,500 per, per contract. So if we did two, it'd be double that. And the potential gain on this stock, if if the stock went to 483 or beyond by January 19th, so it's you know a week and a half away or a week away, and we would make $740, which is a pretty good return. It's about 1.56% return in nine days, or it's like 63% annualized. So that's a great return. If you could make that. On all your trades, we we'd all be you know in great shape. So that's kind of the standard covered call. And then let's compare that to doing basically the same trade um, using the poor man's covered call. So if we instead of buying a hundred shares of the stock, we actually buy one March four eighty five call, and that's a 39 delta. And that, that number will come in handy when we calculate gain. So I just wanted to write it down. And it that would cost us $7.04, 704, $704 per contract. And then we're going to sell the exact same call, the January 19, 483. So it's going to pay us $91, just like the covered call. So our net cost on this trade is $613 per contract. So compare $47,000 to $600. That's why people call it the poor man's cover call. It's not, I mean, it still takes some capital to put the trade on. And this is a very expensive stock. So if we were trading, you know, back when we were trading, I think Microsoft, we were paying $500 for the Poor man. And, and you can do way less than that as well if the price is lower. So the potential gain, and this is how you calculate the potential gain on the trade. So if the stock moves from 476 to 483, then that would be a six and a half point move. And if you multiply that by the delta, 0.39, remember that's the strike we bought it would be about a two and a half point gain. So we would make about $253 if it moved to 483 divided by our risk, 613. So it's about a 41% return. So great return. I like to call this like a leveraged covered call. So, um, so you know, some great questions have come in. So Eric uh, wanted to know what's your maximum risk on this trade. So your risk is really what you pay for the trade, right? So as long as the stock doesn't blow through your short call, the maximum risk on this particular trade would be $600.13, which is great because if the stock dropped to 400 tomorrow, we could get out of this trade and kind of would lose $600. So if the stock dropped, you know, $75 in the SPY, you'd lose seven, you know, $7,650 right off the bat. So, and that's very extreme, but, you know, you have a dollar for dollar risk on the downside. On the poor man, you have a, um, you know, it's a debit trade. So it's a defined risk trade as long as, you don't blow through your short strike. So that's kind of why I think that it's important to really be careful when you say, you know, when you um, are set that short strike. Um, and then um, the other 
really good thing about this particular trade is, and you could do it on the on the cover. So say, for example, SPY goes from 476 to 480 under so you've made money on the long on the your long call and your short call is now worth zero. So you could actually sell next week's call on this and and reduce that $700 every time you sell a call. So you can theoretically take this 613 and if you wrote it for 6 weeks you could be down to almost nothing in terms of the your um exposure on the stock. So, and I've done that before. We actually, at the end of the time, you actually have a, a net credit already. So you can't lose on the trade. And, and how do you repair? That's a great question. So you definitely want to, as long as you don't get totally blown out of the water. So if SPY went to 583, I'd close the trade because it's hard, it's hard to repair them if it's gone way past. But if it's, add or just slightly beyond that 483 i roll it out and roll the strike up so that's kind of how i do it and uh and it keeps you really out of trouble you know if you as long as you don't just hold on um and and you roll out um you know then you're um then you're not going to be in trouble so if it gapped up to 488 you'd probably you could probably roll that you might be able to roll it if you can get a credit and roll it up or just get out of the trade. You're still going to make money on the trade because your 485 has gone, will have gone up. So, um, I mean, it does have risk and it does, uh, they don't all work, but hopefully this is a, you know, helps to point out why a lot of people love the poor man's covered call. Do y'all agree or disagree? Hopefully this is, you know, to me, this is going to be one of my go-to strategies this year. I think that you can put a lot of these on and, you know, I, I was talking to somebody that said, and they, and they were looking at this and they said, wait a minute, if I did the one on the left, I can make $740. If I make the one on the right, I make $250. If I did three on the, uh, of the poor man, it still only cost me $1,800 and I can make as much as one in the money covered costs. So, um, so, you know, um, the downside is, and Leo, you know, brought it up and I appreciate the question. So if we sell this four, um, 83 call and it expires January 19th, I know it's a little bit hard to read. Um, if the stock goes into the money, you run the risk of being assigned. And what would happen is if, you know, if you got um, assigned, they, you'd be short at 483. So you don't want that to happen. So you, what you really want to do is manage, you know, one, set your, your short call, your, the one you're selling far enough out of the money so that, that the odds of that happening are minimal. And then two, if it starts to move up, you can roll it out and up or just get out of the trade. So, uh, you know, the worst case um, that I've ever experienced, I'm actually in a case now where I have one on NVIDIA. And so it has been a lot of fun trying to manage that. You know, it's up about $20 a day. So what I've had to do is, you know, roll my short calls up and out so that they're not going to be assigned. And then my long call, I actually rolled out another three months because it, it made a ton of money. My long call made a ton of money. So I was able to roll that out, capture some of that profit, and then adjust the strike. So, you know, to me, it's, a, it's like a chess match when it moves against you. But you just have to be thinking in terms of, you know, worst case scenario, you get, it goes into the money, you either roll it or close the trade. That's kind of my advice. So um, does that make sense, uh, JB? Um, okay. So um, just a, a recap. And then what I would also do, if you guys want, is I'll, we'll go to an option chain and I'll just walk through 
um, that spy trade with you if you if you want. And I can show you exactly where I see the expected move, where the delta is, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, so just to recap while I'm uh, on my slides is one is um, there are lots of variations to this strategy. If you look up, you know, um, poor man's cover call or leap strategies or what, you know, it's known by a lot of different strategies. You'll see everything from you always want to buy it a year out or 18 months out or, you know, 100 days, you know, all over the place. And I've had people that said like, you should buy the 80 Delta because it's, it has the least amount of time value. It also costs the most and it reduces your return. Or you could go out, you know, even lower than I go and say, I want to buy a 25 Delta strike. So I'll show you that in just a second. But um, what I would say is whatever you, um, if you like the strategy and you want to change it around a little bit, you know, that's perfectly fine. You can, you know, find others. Uh, I think it's a great strategy. It's a great bullish strategy. And it can also be a great bearish strategy. I've done them shorted the cues during a, you know, if I thought it we were in a downturn. Um, so you can use this as a hedge in a lot of ways. And also it's a great way to take advantage of a great stock in a bullish trend that's moving up. And I like to look for stocks that are, you know, $200 or more for the strategy, because I don't really want to tie up, you know, $30,000 in a stock. Um, I'd rather put in, you know, $500 and get half the, the maximum return. Um, so it's, you know, low capital requirements. Um, it's a, a, a defined, basically a defined risk trade. As long as you stay under that short strike, it's a defined risk trade. You can only lose what you paid for the, for the long strike. And um, it's very similar to a covered call if you do it as a, um, a call spread, except it's two separate trades. So you won't get the dividend, but you um, and you just have to manage them, you know, closer than you would on just a, um, uh, you know, a, a covered call. And uh, and, you know, the question is, how long do they last? I generally you know, probably have been in them um, two or three weeks is probably what they generally go. Um, if you set it up right and it, and it can move close to your short call, you can be out in seven to 14 days. And uh, I just did one on Cigna where I think I was in it like one week. And I think we got like about a 20 something percent return on risk. So um, it's very scalable. You know, you can look at any stock. It doesn't have to be an expensive stock. You could do a poor man on Bank of America, which is a, you know, a low price, lower price stock. So um, lots of, you know, you can do multiple contracts. You can, if you want to do one, you want to do 10. It doesn't really matter. And, uh, but you do need to closely monitor the trade. That's probably my last uh, thing. So anyway, any questions? or feedback at this point. And then I'll just go to the option chain and show you, kind of walk you around and show you what, um, what I look for. So any questions before I leave these slides? Okay. So, okay, then um, I'm going to unshare for just a second. And now I'm gonna, um, so, will you be calling out in the, I'm not sure what that means, Kevin, but um, in the CSA room, yeah, I put the trades in the, C, in, in the CSA, the credit spread authority room, and I'll continue to do that. Yeah. So, let me show you, um, go to the uh, my option chain. So, I'm going to go here. So, can y'all see my option chain? I want to make sure I'm on the right page. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, okay, so if I was going to, let me just start over. So if I was going to just buy, this is SPY, and if I was going to buy the, a covered call, 
I would buy the shares and I'd be selling, let's go to January 19th, which is nine days away. That's the monthlies. And you see this, um, this brown line here, that's kind of the expected, one way to look at the expected move. Another way is going over here to the right side. You see where it says plus or minus 5.5. So that's what I use Tasty Trade, and they um, uh, and they um, put the um, uh, expected move here. So um, another way of doing it is is what is you know like the 15 delta is is a really good. Um, uh, guide that's kind of one standard deviation away but what I'll do another way of looking at it is you know looking at what's the um, you know is there a support level where it's gone beyond so um, in this particular case I said I would say I think I did the 483 which was you know eight eight points out of the money um and it's five, the expected move is five points. So, so this trade, if you want to look at it, what the maximum ben, uh, maximum reward, max profit would be $716. It's going to cost me $47,000. So that's kind of, that, that will keep a lot of people out of doing a SPY covered call. And so that's kind of your standard. And, you know, it has about a, you know, 50, it's a 50, 50 bet, right? Cause it's a stock. So anyway, that's kind of how the uh, a covered call looks. Now let's build a diagonal. So again, I go out, I don't know, 45 to 60 days. So I'm going to, and I like monthly. So I will look at the March and then I go between 35 and 40 Delta. So here's your Delta. It shows you, it goes from, so right at the money is a 50 delta, right? So here's your at the money. I will go between 35 and 40. And so I would probably choose the 485. And the reason I like 45, remember I talked about the open interest. You want to make sure that this strike has good open interest because when we want to get out of this strike, we want to make sure there's enough people trading this strike and the um so i mean just think about it. this one has 19,000 um open interest this has 900 and 900 is not a low number that's a pretty good number but huge difference right so all i would do is i'm buying this strike so that's my long call so now instead of buying 100 shares i'm actually buying a call for $700 and then I go back to the same day I went before and I will go out here and sell the same strike. So that's going to pay me about $91. So $613 is what it costs me to put on the trade. Now, Tastyworks doesn't run probabilities for uh, diagonals. I guess it has too many weird stuff. And uh, so anyway, that so that is... So it cost me $600 to put the trade on. And if the stock moves from 476 up to 483, I'm going to make money on my long call. And the $90 hopefully just becomes, you know, down to zero. But if the stock didn't get to 480, I could actually roll this call out um, to another week, another two weeks, whatever, um, I wanted, you know, whatever was appropriate. And uh, so that's kind of how the the mechanics of the trade are. So um, anyway, I, I post these trades in a couple of um, questions. Do you ever choose to let your short? I It depends, JB. The question is, do I ever let my short call expire rather than close it out? If I have am right at my 30% profit target, and it's close to the expiration, I close them both out and take my 30%. If I'm not at the 30% and I want to roll it out, I roll it out once I'm at that 
have already captured 80 to 90 percent of the credit. So that's kind of my rule. But, you know, you always look at, um, you know, the market conditions, what's going on and things like that. So, um, you know, you always use judgment. But, you know, sometimes I'll let them expire if if it's um, if I want to just decide, you know, like, well, I'm going to wait till Monday to see what the stock does. I may do that. But most of the time, what I will do is close close them all out for my profit and re, redeploy my capital or roll it out if I still want to be in it. A lot of good questions. So um, that is all I have for you guys. So um, any other questions or anything that I can try to answer for you? Um, um, couldn't you buy the at the money call and sell the same call? Um, you could sell the same strike, but if you if you did uh, if you bought the the at the money call and you sold the same, it's really a different strategy. So this one is is kind of set up so that you can um, uh, it kind of functions as a covered call. So that's kind of the way I do. And again, you could do you know take this strategy and tweak it to what you like about it. So um, anyway, so um, I hope this has been helpful. If you guys, um, it has been recorded. I will post the recording out there. And uh, if um, if you need to reach me for anything, you can, I'm on, we have a Facebook um, group page. It's called Conservative Covered Calls. So if you're not in that uh, join it. There's, um, I post uh, on my, some of my trades there. Um, you can send me, a, a, you know, an email. Um, if you just um, reach out to me, I'll, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. And uh, next month, I'll plan on doing another live uh, online trade uh, or strategy. And then, then we'll kind of plan on having a, um, a, um, an in-person. So, you know, for the local Orlando, Central Florida, great, but, uh, um, um, uh, but we'll do, you know, I think the online is great because it's great to have people from all over the place with different levels of experience. So we're trying to do a little of both. So um, JB said, sounds like this may become not only your favorite, but possibly your only strategy. I like some other stuff. Um, but this is definitely a strategy that I think that, you know, once you've kind of perfected it or at least gotten it good at it, it's a great little money making strategy. And uh, the downside are, you know, pretty low in terms of like how much trouble can you get in on this trade? Pretty low as long as you're managing it. And how much can you make? A lot of, um, you know, you can make a great return, right? If you can make 30% every two weeks on your capital, that's pretty, that's pretty good. So, um, you know, they all don't work out as good as that, as quick as that, but it's a pretty profitable strategy. So I hope you try it. Let me know if you have any questions. And I really appreciate you guys jumping on today after being in the market all day or working all day. Hope everybody has a great evening and reach out if I can help in any way. Okay. And I'll stop the recording here. So I don't,